welcome back to the next lecture on contribution to overall partition functions so far we have discussed translational contribution we have also discussed rotational contribution and as we have been discussing earlier for a gas translational contribution is always there whether it is a monatomic or a diatomic or a polyatomic gas at room temperature translational contribution is always there now moving on from monatomic to diatomic systems that is from atoms to molecules additional contributions come in such as rotational contribution vibrational contribution electronic contribution and if there is any other contribution we have already discussed rotational contribution and in rotational contribution we have discussed contributions for a linear rotor and contributions for a nonlinear rotor so therefore depending upon the system we have to decide which expressions to use whether for a linear rotor or for a nonlinear rotor on an energy scale the order will be first translational contribution then rotational then vibrational then electronic and if we want to couple it with temperature then temperature wise also first the translational contribution will come in then rotational contribution will come in and if the temperature is very high vibrational contribution will, will come in and then at very very high temperature electronic contributions will come in and what are these temperatures at or above which these contributions come in as i said for a gas under normal conditions of temperature and pressure translational contribution is always there rotational contribution is more or less always there and if you go back into your notes we have derived formula where you can get the rotational contribution by direct summation method or by an approximation method that is we have used an approximation and the temperature above which that approximation can be used was named as characteristic rotational temperature or simply rotational temperature today we will discuss the vibrational contribution to partition function when you switch over from atoms to molecules the molecules will have rotational degree of freedom as well as vibrational degree of freedom let us discuss how those contributions can be accounted for before we switch over to the derivations let us have a little recap of how many normal modes of vibration will be there in a given molecule here you will require some information from vibrational spectroscopy we are not going to get into details of vibrational spectroscopy but how many independent modes of vibration are there for a molecule that should be clear to us so look at this comment a non linear molecule that consists of n atoms for that system there are 3n minus 6 independent modes of vibration this information you will need when you deal with the actual systems so if a molecule is non linear and has n atoms there are there are 3n minus 6 independent modes of vibration whereas if the molecule is linear then there are 3n minus 5 independent vibrational modes okay that means if the 
system has two atoms a molecule which is made up of two atoms that molecule has to be linear that cannot be nonlinear and in that case we will use this formula so 3 into 2 is 6 6 minus 5 is 1 there is only one independent vibrational mode however if there is a nonlinear molecule nonlinearity will come when there are more than two atoms in a molecule for example water water is a nonlinear system and if n is equal to 3 then put 3 over here 3 into 3 is 9 9 minus 6 is equal to 3 there are three independent modes of vibration why i am saying all this if there is more than one vibrational mode each vibrational mode is going to have its own partition function i repeat if there is more than one vibrational mode each vibrational mode is going to have its own partition function so if there are three vibrational modes there will be three partition functions corresponding to each frequency or each wave number of vibration so take a look at the comment in a polyatomic molecule each normal mode has its own partition function that's what i was talking about as long as n harmonicities are very small as i just mentioned that we will make use of spectroscopy vibrational spectroscopy over here and when you studied spectroscopy you studied harmonic oscillator you study how an harmonicity arises for our discussion we will not go into details of n harmonicity or n harmonic oscillator we will restrict our discussion to harmonic oscillator so as long as n harmonicities are very small the overall vibrational contribution to partition function is going to be vibrational partition function due to first normal mode multiplied by that for the second normal mode multiplied by more if at all i refer back to our earlier discussion energy is additive when you have to write the partition function then it is multiplicative and that is what is being used over here that is if there are more than one normal vibrational modes the overall vibrational contribution to partition function is going to be qv due to first normal mode of vibration into qv due to second normal mode of vibration into so on and here qvk where k can be 1 2 3 whatever so qvk is the partition function for the kth normal mode so you have to be little careful here when we were considering translational contribution to partition function or rotational partition function this kind of situation did not arise right so in that case we just used the contribution due to translation the contribution due to rotation and we just took care whether the rotor is linear or it is nonlinear. however when you are dealing with the vibrational contributions you have to know how many normal modes of vibration are there and calculate the partition function due to each normal mode of vibration or determine the partition function due to each normal mode of vibration and then multiply all of them i hope it is clear keeping that in mind let us take a relevant example given that a typical value of the vibrational partition function of one normal mode is about 1.1 that is the information given estimate the overall vibrational partition function of non-linear molecule containing 10 atoms read the statement carefully 
what the statement says that a typical value of the vibrational partition function of one normal mode that is about 1.1 that is given to us. And the other information that is given to us is that the system is nonlinear and there are 10 atoms. So, that means I have n is equal to 10 and the system is nonlinear. So, for nonlinear, the number of normal modes of vibration number of normal vibrational modes this will be given by nonlinear nonlinear means 3n minus 6 for linear it is 3n minus 5 so, therefore, for nonlinear we use 3 n minus 6. So, that means 3 into n is equal to 10 minus 6, 24, 30 minus 6 is equal to 24, 24 normal modes of vibration. So, therefore, that means here overall partition function, vibrational partition function is going to be q v of first into q v of second into q v of third into keep on going you have q v of 24. Partition function is multiplicative okay. and if you look at the given information the value of q v is about 1.1. It is an estimate because since they have given an approximate value therefore, they want us to estimate. So, that means your q v is going to be 1.1 into 1.1 into 1.1 how many times? 24 times and once you calculate this the value comes out to be approximately 9.9 .9. and that is what I was referring to that when you compare with translational contribution rotational contribution then this type of situation does not arise. When we are dealing with the vibrational modes then we have to know whether the rotor is linear rotor or the rotor is a nonlinear rotor. If the rotor is a nonlinear rotor, just like the one in this example, we are going to use 3 n minus 6 formula and that gave us 24 normal modes of vibration are there. And overall contribution to vibrational partition function in that case is multiplication of all the values. So, 1.1 raised to the power 24 the value is 9.9. .9. At this point we can have a general comparison with the translational contribution to partition function, rotational contribution to partition function, vibrational contribution to partition function. Recall some of the numerical problems that we solved while calculating translational partition function. Remember the value of partition function turned out to be some number into 10 raised to the power 20, 24, 30 very large. That means at room temperature many translational energy levels are significantly populated. And then if you open your previous notes when we discussed the nonlinear rotor, in that case the value of q r that is rotational partition function was sometimes in thousands. And now if you look at the result that we got over here, the value is 9.9. .9.
so therefore the maximum contribution comes from translation followed by rotation followed by vibration and then when we discuss the electronic we will address those at that time so again and again i am reiterating that in case of vibrational contribution just make sure that you account for each normal mode of vibration now let us move towards obtaining an expression for qv in the previous example we just took a number and then explained that how overall qv can be obtained now let us try to get an expression for qv remember that q is equal to summation j gj exponential minus beta ej in any case we started with this expression that means we need to worry about the degeneracy and we need to worry about the energy levels and in case of non degenerate energy levels you don't need to worry about the gj vibrational energy levels are given by this expression ev which represents vibrational energy is v plus half hc nu bar where v is the vibrational quantum number and its value can range from 0 1 2 onwards whole number and nu bar is the vibrational frequency so hc nu bar represents the energy where does this come from this comes from solving the schrodinger equation let us see what happens when we put v is equal to 0 when you put v is equal to 0 let's see what do we get if i put vibrational quantum number to be equal to 0 then i will get e0 is equal to half hc nu bar this is zero point vibrational energy and this is not zero this should make you clear that when we were talking about internal energy and in that case we were adding u0 right we were writing u is equal to u0 plus something something because at that point we said that there will be a zero point vibrational energy for an oscillator and that is half hc nu bar and when we were saying u minus u0 that means essentially we were setting u0 is equal to half hc nu bar for our purpose we have always been setting the ground state value energy value to be zero and we would like to do that over here also now how we can modify this equation this equation that when we set v is equal to 0 it should give us the value of 0 and that is possible only if i can subtract this number from this if i subtract this number this expression or half hc nu bar from v plus half hc nu bar i will get this expression ev is equal to v hc nu bar and now if i put v is equal to 0 it will be e0 e0 is equal to 0 right so what we have done is modified this expression into another expression by setting e0 is equal to half hc nu that means now i go back to again that discussion that if i want to know the internal energy of a system then i will have to add the zero point energy because what is internal energy it is energy of the system added up in all the forms so therefore this important step 
as we have been doing earlier also is important to understand that if I subtract half s c nu bar and then if I want to know the total energy internal energy I will have to add back the same. But with this modification now uh, E 0 will be equal to 0. So, what I have now is E v is equal to v h c nu bar, where this vibrational quantum number will be 0, 1, 2, etcetera. So, obviously, here E 0 will be equal to 0 according to this. Okay. E 1 is equal to h c nu bar, E 2 is equal to 2 h c nu bar, it is a whole multiple, E 3 is equal to 3 h c nu bar and then I am interested in this q is equal to summation here is v, I will put v is equal to 0 to infinity g is equal to 1 exponential minus beta E v, this is what I am interested now in. So, that means, the expression now becomes v is equal to 0 to infinity exponential minus v beta h c nu bar, this is what now we have to work upon. Here the vibrational quantum number is 0, 1, 2, etcetera, etcetera. So, this discussion, this highlights the advantage of subtracting half h c nu bar that makes the calculations or the derivations easy but at the same time it gives an answer to when we were discussing the expressions for u, the expressions for g when the expressions for h there was always u 0, g 0, h 0. So, if the vibrational contribution, if the vibrational excitation is not too large, then harmonic oscillator approximation may be made. I urge you, request you to go through what is a harmonic oscillator and what is an n harmonic oscillator, what leads to n harmonicity. But remember this approximation over here, if the vibrational excitation is not too large, okay, you are not making the molecule dissociate, I mean it is not too large, then harmonic oscillator approximation may be used that means, the result that we are going to get is only approximate. So, we used E v is equal to v plus half h c nu bar, where v is equal to 0, 1, 2, we have just discussed that, that is because we want to measure energies from 0 point level, in that case E v is equal to v h c nu bar we made use of this to discuss how to arrive at an expression which can be further worked upon to obtain an expression for vibrational contribution to partition function. So, I can put a superscript here V which represents vibrational contribution to partition. And then remember the overall vibrational partition function will be product of first normal mode, product of second normal mode, product into third normal mode of vibration etcetera. That is overall vibrational contribution to partition function is due to is equal to multiplication of the vibrational contribution to partition function due to first normal mode into that due to second normal mode into that due to third normal mode. Having discussed this, now in the next lecture 
we will expand this summation and see what form it takes when we change over from summation to integration. We will also discuss the temperature at or above which that approximation is valid. But all those things we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you very much.